Okay, so today we're actually going to look at biomes. And some of the things with biomes, biomes are seen around the world. Um, these are regional areas, and the main type of way that biomes are classified, not only by plant and veg uh, vegetation, but also by, you can identify it by its temperature, and also the amount of precipitation that is located in those particular regions. Um, as we said, the temperature and precipitation, those are very important for a terrestrial biome. The way it's classified, and we'll see it in a couple of slides later when we look more specific at those terrestrial biomes, are a thing called a climatograph. And it's a special graph identified showing temperature and precipitation on the vertical axis and also your months are located on the horizontal axis. Uh, we are also going to study in biomes aquatic systems. And I have aquatic um, voiceover PowerPoint for you to listen to um, on that one as well. But some of the characteristics that distinguish um, the different communities, number one are the coastlines, uh, your open ocean areas, the deep seas, but also the coral reef kelp forests, which are located closer in, um, and also the marshes, mangroves, and of course your fresh and freshwater systems such as lakes and rivers. Uh, in an aquatic system, excuse me, in an aquatic system, we're going to look at the features, which are your water temperature, the salinity levels, and also how much nutrients are being dissolved into it. We're also looking at the waves that are moving, creating the energy there, currents pulling in and out, and also how deep these systems can be, as well as the plant and animal life. Uh, the first type of um, uh, terrestrial biome we're going to look at is the temperate deciduous forest. That is predominantly located in eastern North Carolina, or basically all up and down the eastern seaboard of the United States. Deciduous trees basically are those trees that lose their leaves, such as the oak, the beech, the maple. Um, those are examples, okay? Um, but these trees will le lose their leaves, and they will became, become dormant during the winter months. They are, um, again, mid-latitude -lat forest. We can find them in Europe, eastern China, and also the north northeastern side of the North America. Another neat feature about these deciduous forests are that they have very rich and fertile soils. A lot of um, nutrients are found in these particular regions. Oh, and going back, this is a climatograph right located down here. You can see on the left side is your monthly temperature range right here. On the right side is the precipitation. The red line is showing the temperature, whereas the blue line up here is showing your precipitation, the amount of rainfall. Okay, and you can see that it's warmer in the summer months and it's colder in the winter months. Therefore, in a temperate deciduous forest, they're experiencing all four seasons. Temperate grasslands um, as well, they experience more extreme temperatures because of the cool, arid regions. Um, you can see right here the temperature range from the winter time all the way to the summer time on there. They typically have less precipitation, so you can see the precipitation will, is leveling out. They, it does peak around one to two months, but these are your prairies of North America. Um, a lot of it's converted for agriculture, the grassland area, but some of the animal life you're going to find there besides the grasses or bison, prairie dogs, antelopes, and also uh, birds that will nest in the, the grasses. And this is showing you again a climatograph of a temperate grassland where the bars down here represent the precipitation. The line graph will represent a, um, the temperature ranges. These again are some of the vegetation you're going to find. A lot of perennial flowers such as, I love this one, goldenrod is actually used uh, and extracted for medicine, as well as this one right here. It's called a purple cone flower, but it's also called 
Echinacea. Um, hold on, let me get this one. Echinacea, um, where it will, um, you can extract it and it's actually used for um, um, uh, people who have a lower immune system. They will take that to kind of boost their system. Okay. Uh, also, in a temperate rainforest, now these are located in the Pacific uh, Northwest, such as Seattle, Washington, Oregon, around that area. They have a good amount of precipitation. There are a lot of conifers there. That means cedar, spruce, hemlock, firs. Um, uh, they're basically evergreen trees as well. That's another name. So they usually have a lot of moisture-loving animals, such as the banana slugs, lots of slugs out there. Their soil is also uh, fertile, but also because it's close to the Pacific coastline, it is susceptible to erosion and landslides due to the high amount of precipitation. You can see right here this blue line with the higher precipitation rate. <coughs> One of the things that they're experiencing <coughs> in that region is where they're harvesting a lot of the trees and therefore it's becoming ex uh, some of the vegetation and the trees are um, the, because the hardwoods they're becoming extinct because of human and deforestation. Here is showing you again the, the ranges with the rainfall in the bar graphs and the temperature ranges in the line graphs up there. Some of the trees again that you experience these are your hardwoods, the oak, the hickory, the beech, the maples, but then you also have um, um, the hemlock, which is like an evergreen, and some of the herbs. And here are some of the animals that you're going to find in those regions, such as the deer, the turkeys. Um, you're going to find snakes, black bear, and those as well. And this is showing you a food web of a deciduous forest that we have right here with the plants, the producers here, first consumers that are going to eat only the vegetation, secondary consumers that could range and um, feed off of numerous ones, and then your tertiary, the top ones, the cougar, the bears, um, numerous ones. Then we have a tropical rainforest. That's another one that we have. It's located in Central South America, parts of Asia, and also West Africa. They have year-round rain. In fact, it's so much rainfall, it's almost like two meters in height. Two meters in height for that, where they experience warm temperatures. It's very dark and damp, lots of lush vegetation in that area. Okay, the, so the soil is very poor and very acidic. And also the nutrients uh, that are being absorbed out are being uh, taken out predominantly by the plant life that's located there. You can see a typical um, um, rainfall. Um, here we have the... Um, trying to locate it right here. The climatograph where you can see the bar graph right here is the amount of precipitation and this line graph right here is the temperatures where temperatures basically are about the same year long. Again here is uh, showing the um, flora which are your vegetation. You can see the canopy of the trees that are located, very little shrubs or trees below it because these are absorbing all the, the sunlight for, um, for photosynthesis. You can see again a lot of palms and other kinds of vines and trees, canopy trees there. The, again, now the animal life is so uh, diverse. There's thousands of folks here located. So you can see thousands of of insects and animals there, uh, tree frogs, there's such a variety there. Um, you can see a lot of bird life um, and butterflies that are located there. Here again is a typical food chain of the tropical rainforest. Uh, there is a tropical dry forest as well on this one. It's located in parts of India, Africa, and South America. They typically do have areas of wet and dry seasons. 
Um, there um, typically is warm. You can see right here that the temperature remains constant and the amount of precipitation varies where you have the dry months and then very wet months, almost like a monsoon in that area. The savanna is another one that we have. It's um, tropical grassland, sort of like the prairies that we have. They're located in Africa, South America, and Australia, and also parts of India. Uh, the precipitation only during the rainy seasons. And some of the animals that we're going to find, zebra, gazelles, giraffes, lions, hyenas, just to name a few. And again, here are listing some more animals that are located in that region. The desert is another biome. It has very little, um, probably as low as maybe just a few millimeters of rainfall up to maybe up to maybe 20 to 30 centimeters of rainfall a year. Um, the Sahara Desert is another one that's very bare, lots of sand dunes as this picture located over here. But some of them also have vegetation in them. You can have deserts with vegetation as well. Uh, they are not always hot. You can have very cool temperatures in a desert. One of the things is due to the amount of cloud cover or that albedo. There's no clouds to actually trap in any of the heat um, absorbed during the daylight. So when it's nightfall, all the heat is actually lost back in space or back into the atmosphere um, so it gets rather cool. Here is one showing a typical climatograph of the desert area near Phoenix, Arizona. Very little rainfall, and you can see the temperatures ranging up there, the average temperatures. Again, some of the vegetation you have, the prickly pears, the cactus, agave, um, the yucca plant right here, um, and some of the, the shrubs and bushes that we have there. And of course you can see the vegetation that are thriving off of the um, animals that are located or thriving in this particular region off of the little vegetation or nutrients found in the soil. The semi-arid again has more of a brush or grass area you can see low lying on there. And again, the semi-arid -arid desert uh, are those animals that can burrow into the ground and feed off of the vegetation that's there. And again, the web, food web of a typical desert. You can see again that these plants down here are called succulents. That means that they are sucking out any of the moisture that's found in the soil, the very little of it, okay, and working all the way up. The tundra is another one. It's very cold. You're going to find those in Canada, Scandinavia regions, and also parts of Russia. Very little precipitation, but if they do, it's usually locked into ice caps that are in there. Um, their seasons uh, typically are, uh, they really don't have a variety of seasons. It's basically um, spring and fall and winter is extended. Um, they don't really experience the summer. Um, they're really cold winters, and there's something called a permafrost, and that is like the frozen soil layer on top. Uh, some of them are really long uh, or deep, in, in, um, but because they are melting, the permafrost is actually, or thawing out, the permafrost is actually thinning there. Um, very few animals. Uh, you'll find polar bears. You'll find caribou, um, air, animals like that. But you do find lichen, and they're located on the rocks, and low vegetation. You do not find any trees in there, uh, no trees, basically. I know it says with few trees, but usually one sign of a tundra is that they are um, low-lying, almost like a prairie or a grassland right here. But it's real low lying um, grasses and probably lichen that's found on the rock. If it's a tree, it's very short on there. Here's a typical climatograph with that where you can see limited amount of precipitation and temperatures are low right here as well. Uh, the taiga that we have right here, the boreal forest, is again located in Canada, Alaska, parts of Scandinavia. 
cool, dry climates, and the, and, and the vegetation you're going to find here are more of the evergreens or the conifers, where it's the spruces, the um, pine trees, um, hemlocks, things like that. And, and animals, you're going to find moose, wolf, um, bear, and a lot of migratory birds located in there. You can see, again, the winters are very cold. Um, the summer, temperature-wise, will get up there maybe in the um, 80s, but you're not going to experience really um, heat waves in the, the taiga. Uh, you can see the precipitation also in the summer months is a lot higher, and it peaks there. Here are some of the, the plant life you're going to find there again, predominantly evergreens, evergreens, or um, conifers. And again, the animals that you have here, those that are experienced have a thicker uh, fur or coat on them to experience that cooler um, winter and falls and spring, early springs. And again, the food web for a um, for this one. The chaparral is located in the uh, near the Mediterranean seas, but also near California and parts of Chile and uh, the southern part of Australia. They typically have mild and wet winters and warm and dry summers. This is where a lot of the forest fires are located because of the vegetation there. Um, they have a lot of shrubs in that particular region. You can see that during the summer months here, that is where the precipitation is actually lowest and their precipitation is higher in the winter months. Temperatures about the same, even keel, very cool temperatures. All right, and this is, concludes our PowerPoint for um, biomes, terrestrial biomes. Um,